So before the holiday period, Elemental released the beta version of version 3.10 and whatever version it is for the free and pro versions. It's the latest beta version. And with it, it brought a range of new or updated features. I want to cover some of those in this video, but I want to ask you a question before we move on and take a look at them. Is Elemental simply playing catch up to the likes of Bricks Builder and maybe even tools like Generate Blocks? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, as always, I will link through to the article over on the Elemental Developers website so you can check it out, see how you can recreate some of these things for yourself. So check that out if you're interested, link down below. Okay, so the first thing and one of the things I want to kind of show you is the Elemental Nested option. Now at the moment, this is only available to you inside the tabs widget and you do need to enable this as part of the experiments. So to access this, you're going to need to go into Elemental and into Settings. Inside there, open up the Experiments tab scroll through make sure you've got the flexbox container enabled that's active and you'll see we have nested elements this is currently an alpha feature so enable both of those and you'll have access to this feature now heading over into a page inside Elementor let's go ahead and find the tabs widget let's drag that onto our page now you can see if you've used the tabs widget in the past this is going to look a little bit different you're going to notice we have this drag widgets here feature. Now, for those among us that have never used this or don't really know what I'm talking about with nested templates, it's basically something that we had to hack our way around before. You could create templates in Elemental Pro and then you could reference those using the shortcode inside your tab layout. Now, we can do this directly inside the actual tab panel itself. So by the drag widget here, we no longer are restricted to filling out the information on the left hand side. We can now literally go ahead and drag whatever we want in. So if you want to add a heading in, we can drag a heading in. You want to add some copy inside there, you can go ahead, you can add a text editor. Want to go ahead and add something like a video in? Well, you can do that as well. So you can simply go ahead and drag our video in. And now that tab has all that content which we can style and lay out. And we can use things like the Flexbox container to position things to make these a little bit more interesting. And then if we jump over to tab two, we can then go ahead and repeat the same process. You kind of get the picture. So if we update this page and take a little look, you can see tab one now has the video and the text and all the content we placed inside it. Tab two has nothing in it. Tab three, the same kind of thing. So you can use these options to customize the content inside it. However, my first thoughts are, it's nice to see that they're moving in this direction, but why this needs to be an alpha feature when it's something as simple as adding content in and why it's restricted to only working inside the tabs. We can't use it inside the accordion or any of the other layout options we would kind of want to use it in. Compare that to something like Bricks Builder, which has pretty much exactly the same thing. You can see I've created one inside you. We have, if we go ahead and just do a search for nested, you can see inside there we've got the accordion, the tabs, and a slider. And all of these work in pretty much exactly the same way I've just shown you. If we wanted to add an accordion in, we can simply click to add that into our layout. And once we're inside the accordion, we can go ahead and we can add the content inside there using a very similar style of working. So again, it's one of those things that this has been in Bricks Builder for several months now, and it came out relatively quickly. I know we can argue the point that, well, it's an earlier builder with less users and all those kinds of things, and there's validity in that. But these are not exactly game-changing features. So why we only see it inside the one, I'd like to see it in all of them. But at least they're moving in the direction where we are getting this. It'd just be nice to get that container out of beta and into a final release, and then maybe some of these features can start to move forward. Again, though, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you excited for this, or is it just a little bit sort of, you're just playing catch up, trying to keep up with what everybody else that's kind of surpassing you in the page builder market are actually doing? Let me know down below. Okay. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Now, a little bit more advanced is the ability now we're no longer restricted to only being able to use things like pixels or percentages and M's and REMs and VH and VW. We can now pretty much, or we will be able to, use pretty much any kind of CSS calculation. So let me just quickly show you what I'm referencing. Let's choose our heading, for example, and hop over into the style section, open up our typography options, and you can see we've got the size. 
Now we've always been able to do things like pick the pixels and the M's and so on. We now have the little pencil icon that allows us to create our own options. So selecting that now replaces this with a field that we can start to create calculations. If you want to use clamp or calc or any of these kinds of options, you can use that inside here. So if you are more advanced when it comes to CSS or you want to dabble using these technologies and you still want to use Elementor as opposed to hand coding this and then linking it in various different ways, you'll be able to do that relatively soon. So you can see pretty much anywhere. So if we're talking about the typography, we jump over to advanced, for example, when it comes to margins, we can click on there. And again, we have those options for the pencil. And now we can go ahead and we can click and start adding the content in using whatever CSS calculation methods or whatever CSS units we actually want to use. So again, check out the documentation to see exactly how this works, but it is relatively simple and straightforward. And if you are used to working with these tools and these options, you can now start to work with it inside Elemental in this beta build. Now, if you're based in the EU or you just want to make sure that you are GDPR compliant and you don't have Google fonts and you don't want to use them on your site, it gets a lot easier now with this update when it's released. If we come over into Elemental and into Settings, open up the Advanced tab, under Google Fonts, we now have an option to go ahead and completely disable Google Fonts. So we disable those. You'll see now any other options underneath on how they get loaded is also removed. We can simply hit Save Changes, and now Google Fonts will not be loaded as part of your website using Elementor. So good to see that that is something we're going to see very, very soon. Hopefully, this won't be a beta-only feature. It will be available in the full final release very, very soon. Next on the agenda is if you are an advanced custom field or pods user and you want to use a countdown timer, you can now use that to dynamically generate the end date for any of your countdown timers. It's very easy to do. Make sure you have ACF or pods installed. Make sure you have at least one field in there that's a date time field and you are set. So let's give it a try. Let's do a search for the countdown timer. We'll add that to our site. And all we need to do is come over to the due date on the left hand side. We now have a dynamic tags option. We'll click on there and you can see there's my ACF or pods if you're using pods. We can click on date time field, click on the wrench icon and choose the actual due date field that we want to use. And that will then set things up. And you can still go ahead and set a fallback date and time should you need that just in case something goes wrong for a post that doesn't have any content in it for the time and date. And that's basically all there is to it. So any more dynamic features are always good to see. However, this isn't something that a lot of users are probably going to find that useful. But I do appreciate the fact it's been added in. But as always, these are just some of the things that I think are most interesting. Check out that article because I think that's going to cover a few other things you might want to check out for yourself. But as always, let me know your feedback. Are they just playing catch up? Are they doing good things? Do you appreciate what they're doing? Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.